I would like to take a moment and understand these things, these events, have three elements. You're here to be educated. You want to learn. You're here to be motivated. And you're here to be a little bit entertained. What we see in SaaS around the world is that it is thriving. My question to you is, what if SaaS is the invention of humankind? How would I defend that? Well, as I grew up in the world of Philips, what I learned that in those days, starting a company took a lot of effort. Today, SaaS companies around the world can get started all by a local entrepreneur who does that. Therefore, it is no surprise that SaaS thrives in countries like Turkey and Brazil, where normally the challenges of the economic environment would be really challenging. But today they can. SaaS allows any of us in the audience to take it on to change the world. And I think if all of us take a look at the daily news, I think we all kind of like probably agree there's a little bit of changing that needs to be done. Keep this in mind. This means that you in the audience, all of you, you can change the world. And I have to tell you, DJ Mitzi, I have to tell you, that gets me excited. What do you think? Yeah. Oh, I want to get some excitement on that. That's what I'm talking about, what we can do in SaaS. We need a little bit of more of that energy to live up this entire market. Now, I found, however, that in many cases, we're looking primarily to what we call this unicorn culture. And it's pretty cool, this unicorn culture, and all of us want to be part of it. But you know what? Only one out of a thousand gets to be like that. One. Let's say there's a thousand people here. That means pretty much all of you, you're part of the other culture. The other culture is called, in Silicon Valley terms, the walking dead. What this culture is about is estimating that you essentially are going to die because the one that wins will overcome all the negativity. I don't believe in that. What we believe is that there's an incredible opportunity for the other companies. I'm going to talk to you about how to achieve that. What I find is that there's a reason why many of these companies fail. And I give you an idea, like, mm, give me some Michael. Michael Jackson. Companies come in like this. Companies come in like this. And what I want, lower, lower, lower. What I want is like, hey, you know what? I want a new VP of sales. They bring in a new VP of sales. I'm talking to the CEO. VP of sales doesn't work out. Let's fire the dude. Bring in another VP of sales. Not a VP of sales. Oh my God, he's so good. Gonna hit the targets. No, it doesn't. Targets doesn't get hit. Gets fired. Not a dude. Number three VP of sales. Oh my God, finally it works. We're three years later. Yes, people, we're the walking dead. Sit back with the VC. VC comes to me and says, you know what? Let's get rid of the CEO. Boom. This is what the walking dead looks like. There's a gradation of this. There's not just one or two. You go all through these graduations. We found, however, there's a way to avoid this. We found that there's a way that we can avoid this altogether. What I'm gonna talk you through is to figure out what essentially is happening early on. Now, early on, what I find with the number one mistake that we make is that we essentially are listening to the loudest noises out there not necessarily to the right voice. And all I hear from many of these folks are what I call the, the blah, 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 the yeah, 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 like we can't figure this out. It's like noisy to me. every time, blah, 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 yeah, 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 send more email, make more outbound phone calls, as if that is the sole way of getting sales done. And it ain't. We need to stop listening to all these voices. Some in the audience or some in the media will call it fake news. We need to start listening more to scientific elements. Now, what I'm going to take you through, I'm going to give you three specific frameworks that are going to help you to understand how to succeed. 
Number one framework, the stages that we go through. I'll let you take an absorption on this. In this particular framework, you see the downward trend right after go to market fit, and you see the upward trend where you are gonna go into revenue and process. Previously, revenue and process were only of interest in later stages. The number one thing that startups have to understand today, SaaS companies got to implement process and got to implement unit economics in the go-to-market phase. It is a key development that needs to take place. If you do that, you're going to go on an upward trend. And the upward trend is going to help you scale your revenue because something that works. That little squiggly line that you see, the number one thing that people do when they get money is hire more people. If that B round comes and the squiggly line is still going on, that squiggly line is going to amplify by the amount of revenue you make. And by the amplification, it's going to cause you ups and downs, causing issues in the overturn, or turning over of your VP of sales. This, therefore, we need to make sure that revenue and process and that unit economics are implemented in today's go-to-market phase. And only then, only then, do we see there's some good funk occurring, some good upper trend. Yes, it's going to be like that for another 12 minutes. Get ready. <laughs> and those of you in the audience who know me, no Red Bull this morning yet. We're still on, on zero Red Bull. These stages and understanding what this is, is of key understanding. The number one challenge that we see in many cases is that when you hit the go-to-market issue, people are making very common mistakes. I'm going to try to point this out. In here, we got five go-to-market strategies. Product-led growth where us, the customers, act as the sales and the marketing channel. One stage, if you call a person, they pick up the phone, answer email, and try to make sure your business is done. Two stage, as they are, sets up an AE, field sales, typically called account executive sales managers covering a region, and strategic sales, a person calling on a massive account. We match that with four different marketing models, inbound, outbound. The common mistakes that we see are very simple. And we're, I'm currently working on an account in this very specific area like this. Sales, field sales, and we would expect a targeting ABM marketing program. What do we see? Marketing is measuring the amount of leads in thousands a month. The amount of deals that this company is closing is somewhere in the between the 30 to 40 a year. When you have 30 to 40 deals a year, you don't need 2,000 leads a month. It is not needed. That means that your volume-based marketing doesn't you know, like match up with your field sales organization. Other thing that we see, at the very same time, we see the same occur in reverse. We have a high-velocity company selling at a couple of thousand dollars a year. What we would expect of that organization is a very inbound-driven, a very high-velocity-based. What do we see? The hiring SDRs, AEs, trying to relocate their organization with the primary intent to lower the client acquisition cost to lower regions. Folks, below $10,000, in most cases, you're an inbound-driven organization. You don't need SDRs and AEs to close you directly because the SDRs are gonna make it too expensive. You probably need what they call an inside sales wrap. What we see down here, these things need to match. Your marketing motion, and your sales motion need to match with each other. Now, that is framework number one. We now understand what, what, what the guilt to market is. The next framework is data-driven. Ran in a, a couple of workshops every, yesterday, and every time we ask, hey, if I want to double my revenue, what do I need? What we need for double the revenue, Alex, are you still talking there? And so what we see there is if you want double the revenue, you want double the leads. That essentially is not necessarily needed. I'm going to try to explain this to you. The volume metrics model that we have has been very destructive. 
Volume metrics means that we're primarily measuring things in the number of increasing activity. How many deals are we winning? How many MQLs? How many meetings have we set? How many emails have we sent? How many phone calls do we have? That is volume metrics. We're measuring the volume of something. In this case, what the plus sign is, we're measuring the amount of wins, the amount of commits. What we see over the, over the years, individual departments have started to take a visual ownership, marketing, MQLs, your prospecting department, how many SQLs do you organize? Your, your sales organization, how many wins and how much revenue? And all of them measure in volume metrics. And as a result, we get this siloed organization. This siloed organization, however, does not work it. It makes us feel like we're driving in a car full force and all we want is more, more, more. It's like this entire army of rats were trying to chase the same goal. is Silicon Valley in a nutshell, people. People driving with their hair on fire in their Tesla like 100 miles an hour trying to, I got any more leads, where can I find more leads? I need another thousand, two thousand, where do I get them? And only to find themselves stuck in traffic, and you know, as you say, other people are stealing all the stuff around them. It's not really the most effective way of doing it. When we look at it from a scientific perspective, it's not. There's a perfectly and utter reasonable way on how to get the same. This maniacal focus, on winning customers has gone on far too long in the development. You only have to have a maniacal focus on winning customers for the first 20 to 40 if you're selling a platform and the first 20,000 if you're looking at the subscription-based, you know, user-based model. Everything else, we have to understand. SaaS is a system where one thing impacts the next thing, impacts the third thing. Let me give an example. In this case, if I calculate this out, 1,000 leads coming in, conversion rate goes through conversion rate. In this case, we can see it generates $25,000 worth of revenue. Normally, in order to double the leads, I would, to double the revenue, I would say double the leads. But look at that. By simply increasing across the board 10%, minor, minor marginal increase, I can nearly double the revenue. Marginal gain in a system is how you operate. SaaS businesses are intended to operate in that model. Now, if we look at that system, it's based on the mathematical understanding, x to the power of y equals, in this case, 10% improvement across seven metrics equals the same double x. You know what? It is a lot easier to ask a part of your organization to make a 10% improvement than it is to ask them to double the leads, or double the sales, or hire twice as many salespeople. What we see down here is the exponential part when we start selling licenses and on top of that usage, we get also the compound impact, which is even more powerful. If I tell you that compound impact is like a machine that keeps on cranking, like crank, 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 it actually reminds me a little bit. Crash it, trend it, mail, upgrade it, chart it, point it, zoom it, press it, snap it, work it, quick, erase it, write it, cut it, paste it, save it, load it, check it, quick, rewrite it. It's the fantastic machine, it keeps running, like compound, compound. That is what is so great about that compound engine. Now, I'm gonna take a look at what is coming into the future. We have something even better happening for you. What we are seeing, that the advances in product-led growth are giving us a whole new direction. What we see down here is the way on how you build a scalable organization. Costs are looked at per section. This is the cost model for a two-stage sales organization. We are paying the cost per lead for finding. We have a client acquisition cost that extends people, it extends beyond the close, beyond the commit, to the onboarding process. 
And then the expansion sale, CTS, stands for cost to service. Quick interlude, that organization is the customer success organization. That organization is where your profit gets made. That organization, in generally, is not the best compensated part of the company. And as I grew up, people told me salespeople get paid more money because they, in generally, are closer to the revenue. This tells us that part of the organization needs to get paid, folks. That cost is going up. Now, the growth, the beautiful growth going up is I want you to think that this becomes a closed loop system. And what this closed loop system allows, what we see with product-led growth, that new customers can be generated anywhere. And that, that is like dynamite. That, I'm telling you, when you see all these growth loops occurring everywhere, that essentially, to me, it creates like fire. I'm on fire. I tell her, baby, 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 I'm on That engine product-led growth, for those of you, Zoom, Slack, okay, that's where we want to be, okay? That is all these growth loops occurring. Now, process is how we're going to get there. And what I'm going to point out is how you establish process. This is a tweet that I picked up from Matt Wensing, and as you see down here, he pointed out several things that he wouldn't do again. I agree with everyone except having a co-founder, because I have to tell you, my co-founder is one of the freaking best co-founders I ever could find. Co-founders really, really work for me, and I, I find that often. If you look at it, he points out process is there to make process architects. In this case, I'm going to show you a simple way I can create four processes. I measure the average SDR handoff and the average AE rate. I put a four by four quadrant up. If you're below, then find this. In this way, by simply creating and measuring metrics, I can create four simple processes what I need to do. If I have a great win rate and I have a great handoff rate, then science simply tells me, scale your business. Win rate good, handoff rate good. If one of these fails, it also tells me what to do. Now, I want to bring this message to you, coming from Silicon Valley. Over the years, we have found that the primary goal and the primary objective of companies was to be the fastest. We found that it was all go, 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 capture your market, do more, do more, do more, faster, faster, faster. Today, however, we find that taking those shortcuts to go faster is no longer the best way. What we find is that there's another way. That other way is process driven. It is not just about taking the shortcuts, but is knowing which shortcuts to take. If we combine process, if we combine it with science and, and, and data, then we know which shortcuts to take. We know when we should hire people, when we should scale. This approach is what we really need to look to. Now, in order to do this in the right order, we're looking at a data-driven model, match it to your GTM program, and then use process to execute it. Okay. We thought that SaaS as a revolution that we're a part of we always thought that SaaS stood for sales as a science. However, what we see today is that many companies that have a recurring revenue are not even part of software as a service. And so what we are starting to see with your industry, that essentially that is not sales as a science, that is not software as a service, but that is sales as a science. And that is not a revolution, but this has been going on for a while. Marketing has already started to use some of these metrics. Sales is now expanding, and soon it will include customer success. With that said, this is what we are here for today in these coming days. Can we look around? Can we see other companies that can become part of your journey? I believe that many of you in this audience don't have to be a walking dead. I believe that if we can increase the success rate from one out of a thousand to 10, to 10 out of 100 or 100 out of 1,000 companies, I feel that it's very, very capable when we start following a scientific approach. I believe that when you're here, I want you to do three things. First of all, entertain yourself, network. Second of all, get motivated. We are living in a really, really nice situation. And third one is educate, educate, educate yourself. With that, 
I want to thank you all for coming. I first want to thank DJ Missy. Thank you very much for doing this for us. I want to thank I want to thank Alex for bringing us all together and the team at Sastock. I want to wish you and hope for you for have a wonderful event. Have an absolute blast, people. Thank you.